This is your Weather Extreme video for Wednesday, August the 3rd. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in. There's a look at the temperature trace at my weather station in Helena yesterday. And uh, interesting to see that the uh, thunderstorms came through uh, between about 1 and 2 o'clock. And that dropped the temperature from 95 degrees down to about 77. And then the temperature basically stayed there through most of the afternoon and gradually fell off to uh, the low around 72 uh, around uh, 6 a.m. this morning. So interesting trace. Uh, temperature never able to recover after those thunderstorms uh, that moved through. Uh, although I did not get that much rain, only four hundredths of an inch. Satellite image this morning uh, shows that we have a few clouds across the Alabama sky, but more important than that, we have a good deal of uh, fog occurring. Fog fairly widespread and uh, reducing the visibility in some locations to less than one mile. There are no travel advisories or fog advisories in effect, but uh, allow a little extra time getting to your destination this morning. The fog should burn off by 9 or 10 a.m. or so. The uh, surface map features the high pressure that has been with us for a good while now across the southeastern U.S., the sort of semi-permanent feature we see during the summer. In the upper atmosphere, we're still on the eastern periphery of uh, the ridge, and so any thunderstorms that do occur today uh, or showers will be moving generally from the north to the south, uh, a little, maybe a little off of that, just a, a slight amount. The temperatures this morning across central Alabama, generally in the mid-70s, a little bit cooler in the northeast sections where they're around 70 degrees. But again, you can note all the uh, fog and calm wind, so just keep that fog uh, in mind. Radar is more clear today than it was yesterday. If you'll recall, yesterday we had uh, some thunderstorms in middle Tennessee headed our way, and those definitely moved through the state, giving just about everybody a little bit of rain at least. Watch warning map is uh, fairly compl complex this morning. We have uh, the orange areas are heat advisories over the lower Mississippi River Valley. We have those green areas over New Mexico and Arizona primarily. Uh, those are flash flood watches. And then we also have heat warnings, the bright pinkish areas up over uh, the northern uh, part of the Rockies. The gray areas you see tend to be um, air quality uh, issues. The uh, quantitative precipitation forecast, or QPF, uh, still focuses on the sea breeze along the uh, Gulf Coast area primarily. Uh, over the central Alabama area, it looks like uh, we should see on the order of a half to maybe one inch. But again, for the next five days, those are going to be in the form of showers. So it will be spotty and not everybody gets that uniform rain. Storm Prediction Center is out looking at enhanced risk over parts of uh, North and South Dakota this morning. That's surrounded by a... Uh, Slight risk covering, again, parts of North and South Dakota, as well as a little bit of uh, Minnesota. On day two, the slight risk moves into the western Great Lakes, focused primarily on northern Wisconsin and a little bit of the upper peninsula of Michigan. And then for day three, wow, how often do you see this in the summertime? Uh, no slight risk, no marginal risk for day three. And the tropics, the tropics are, are still relatively quiet, with the exception of Earl. Uh, Earl went through a bit of a, um, uh, an eye replacement cycle overnight with the eye actually reforming to the south of where it had been. But Earl continues to move on a track uh, that will take it into Belize here uh, probably uh, uh, tomorrow morning early. And it could become, and the Hurricane Center is indicating that with the H there, it could become a minimal hurricane before it uh, reaches landfall. It should decrease to a depression as it moves across uh, Belize and parts of Central America, Guatemala there, and into the uh, southern part of Mexico. But it could come out into the Bay of Campeche briefly uh, on uh, late Friday or early Saturday, and that would then uh, ramp it back up to a tropical storm. All right, the 06E GFS model run, and uh, there's the uh, upper air chart, and you can see that little uh, weakness over uh, the St. Louis area that is with that cluster of thunderstorms that we saw up there. And um, I don't think that cluster is going to have a big impact on us. It may put out a boundary that will come down into Tennessee, perhaps even reach uh, the uh, uh, northern uh, part of Alabama. But the HRR, which has been doing a pretty good job of uh, identifying where we expect most of the thunderstorms, um, has uh, kind of outlooked the area along, uh, you might say, the Interstate 20 corridor, basically, today. And uh, so it looks like uh, we'll, we will once again see scattered showers and thunderstorms. 
for Thursday, uh, that little uh, uh, short wave that we saw uh, has moved over into western Kentucky. And uh, so that's going to present some issues for the mesoscale because we will probably see some sort of cluster with that. And that will lay down a boundary that may be an issue for forecasters uh, on Thursday. Friday, we still see that little feature as it's moving slowly through the flow here. It's not uh, rapidly zipping along as it gets over into eastern Tennessee. So once again, that could have an impact on uh, especially the northern half of the state of Alabama. Uh, by allowing a little bit uh, better chances for showers. As we get into the weekend, uh, the GFS kind of keeps this little weakness uh, over the, the extreme southeastern U.S., over uh, Georgia and parts of uh, North Florida. And we notice that that feature stays there Sunday. It's still kind of in there. So there's a little bit of weakness we may have to account for where we may see a little bit better chance for showers and thunderstorms. By the time we get out to Monday, uh, the GFS is more or less losing any of those weaknesses, uh, although there may be something there, but it's not quite as identifiable. And uh, the ridge is now basically along the Mississippi River. And so that just <clears throat> keeps us in scattered showers, so the forecast remaining uh, a bit monotonous. The uh, forecast for Tuesday, uh, the, the, that disturbance or that kind of weakness shows up once again, and we see it again on Wednesday. So the bottom line is showers. We may be able to tell from mesoscale features and, and give a little better presentation on the uh, uh, location for showers as we near each of those days, but not this far out. The mesoscale controls so much. Looking out into voodoo country, the GFS has uh, stopped flipping and flopping quite as bad as it was doing, and it has become a little more consistent in voodoo country. It shows a fairly substantial trough moving through uh, the flow uh, across the central Mississippi River Valley on uh, the 13th of August, that's Saturday, and that could spell a nice cold front to come through our area, a weak cold front, but still a cold front that may signal a air mass change and give us the hint of fall. And that's always nice to see that very first one come through. But the GFS returns us to heat uh, with the ridge building back in around the 18th of August. So the heat is definitely not over. Uh, thanks for tuning in to the Weather Extreme video. James Spann should be back from his vacation tomorrow. Unless he runs screaming down I-65 trying to deal with all these thunderstorms and where they will occur. Uh, but I don't expect him to do that. He'll, he'll be back in the saddle. Uh, and I will have the next ones for you uh, over the weekend. In the meantime, I hope that you have a great Wednesday and Godspeed.